Hello, Dr. Ron England here, and this is Programming for Engineers. And this is actually take two of the classic how truss example problem. And I've already devolved the problem here, as you can see, into, well, the problem. So uh, this is a truss. And what I did is I numbered each of the individual members of the truss. You can kind of see the, the, the numbering here. Or one, two, three. And then I assumed that all the members were under compression. My previous version, if you watched it, which is gone now, um, assumed a direction. But that makes working with the actual um, directions of the forces a lot more difficult than if you just assume they're all under compression or they're all under tension and then work from there. So what you're going to have to do um, to solve the problem, to get the mate, put that together the matrix. And um, before we put together the matrix, this is actually a relatively easy problem to solve using method of uh, sections. But the point is to actually use a matrix method because there's many cases where matrix methods are the best way to go about it. And so it's good to learn them. So what I've done here is the first, next step that I had is I put together a spreadsheet, which I'm going to go ahead and bring right here and oops, minimize it so you can see it. And what I did in the spreadsheet was I, do that again, I, have the uh, the row where I actually have the the uh, numbers of the different um, different elements here of the different members of the beam. I'm going to pull this back up so you can see it. Um, one, and two, and three. And what I did was I I corresponded those with the columns of the matrix because what you're going to do is you're going to take make a matrix of forces and you're going to multiply that times the force vector of 1, 2, 3, 4, all, you know, all the way through 17. There's actually 17 members of this. And what this does when I actually do it the way that I'm doing here, it makes it a lot easier to work with the signs that you've got on each of the different, um, each of the different um, members here. So when I pull this back up, I can say, okay, well, let's just start at A, and let's do the forces in Y, and let's do the forces in X. So I have a of the forces in Y and A of the forces in X. And if you did the forces of A in the Y direction, you would find that you had um, a negative 1 and a negative 0.707, which basically is easy to see because you've got the force at 1 and the force at 3 pointing down, and it goes in the column associated with 1 and the column associated with 3. The reason for the 0.707 is that the force in the Y direction is actually going to be that force that deals with the sine of theta. And in this case, theta is 45. And that force is going to be, and actually in this case it's the cosine, because the way that I drew theta, but it doesn't really matter because cosine of theta and the sine of theta, well, theta is 45 degrees, it's going to be 0.7 to 0.7, they're both the same. So that force vector of 3 in the y direction is going to be 0.707. It's just, so we just times the, times the actual force of 3. So it's really easy to put together this matrix. So down and down, and then um, then I basically over here uh, say that that times the force vector is going to be equal to the external forces. In this case, it's 65. If you use and I, what I did is I just simply assumed the um, direction up for the um, external forces on the bottom and down for the forces at the top. And when I work through the entire problem, I'm going to go through all of these different force vectors. Now there's a few ways that you could go about selecting where you're going to do these force vectors. I just just picked them and made sure that I didn't duplicate any. Uh, but what you could do here is you could just say I'm going to do the y at a, y at b, y at c, y at d, and then work your way around for all the uh, y vectors and then just pick out the um, the major x vectors here which would probably be uh, b, h. You're gonna, now this has got 10 you're going to need 17 equations. So if you do all the y's, that's going to give you 10. That means you need 7 more. So if you did A, I, C, G, E, well, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You need 2 more, so do B and D, and you're done. Of course, you could also do J and F, but you look at F. You can tell by looking at F that the forces at 16 and 17 are 0 anyway, because there's no some force at, there's no external force at F, or any forces coming from any other location. So you've only got one going in each direction. Anyway, once you've done that, and you've, I've put it in a spreadsheet first, but what I have is a little trick here. If I take this spreadsheet, I can save this specific piece as a CSV file, which makes it easy 
for me then to take that and bring it into Python. And once I bring it into Python, I've got uh, my external forces array. I've got my internal forces array. And um, if I use NumPy for doing all this, it's simply a matter of just control enter. Everything's done. And my resultant vector is going to be this guy right here, which is basically going to be the forces uh, at the each of the different elements. So it starts at zero. So this is actually one, two, three. And what you then would do is go back and simply check them by hand. Um, that's all you got to do. And checking them by hand is a simple task too, because you can check many of them by simply going, well, I know if I look at J and I got a 30 kilonewton force going in J and there's only one other force coming in Y, that means that force has got to be coming from one. So it has to be 30 kilonewtons. And that means that, that this member here has got to be in compression. Um, because the force has got to be going up, so this is compression force, which means I've now got 30 going down at A, and I got 65 going up, and I've only got one other uh, one of the force in the y direction, which is at three, which is at 0 0.707, so I can easily calculate the force at three. So, um, and then from there you can easily move on to five because the only force at A in the x direction is going to be three and five. But if you know the force at three, and you know how to get the force of x at three of three then it's easy to do five, so now you can get five, and you can work your way through it and double check your work. So anyway, that is the methodology for solving it. I didn't want to go, I wanted to go through it fast because I want you to solve it. I don't want to show you the solution, I want you to actually do it, and then work your way through and, and check it. So anyway, uh, the point here is that you can create a matrix of equations and solve them simultaneously, going quickly to Python by creating this array, and then using the Python methods, which are shown in a different video. So hopefully that will help you out tremendously. Uh, this is uh, take two. I just wanted to, I made the change in that assumption that everything was in compression. Thank you very much. Good programming.